Sources tell CBS News the job of one of President Trump's top-ranking aides is in jeopardy. National Security Advisor Michael Flynn is in trouble for not telling the whole story about contacting Russia's government during the transition and embarrassing the vice president. Now we're told the president is evaluating the situation. For more on this, Norman Eisen, a Brookings Fellow with Government Studies, is in Washington. He is a former U.S. ambassador to the Czech Republic and a former ethics czar under President Obama. He joins me now. Now, uh, Norman, thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me, Elaine. What exactly is General Flynn accused of doing? General Flynn allegedly uh, has committed uh, one of the uh, worst sins uh, in uh, Washington. First, he was not honest about a contact uh, with a foreign uh, government. And uh, second, when he was asked about it, uh, he uh, was not straightforward about that either. Again, allegedly, the claim is that uh, he was not straightforward about contacts he had relating to uh, the American sanctions against Russia in his conversations with the Russian ambassador. So at this point, Norman, what is your opinion? Can President Trump and Vice President Pence still trust Flynn, or do you expect that he'll be forced out? Well, uh, it's very early days uh, to force out an aide. I know that uh, uh, in the Obama administration, where I served uh, uh, as the chief ethicist, and in the Bush administration, uh, where uh, their chief ethicist spoke out today, this would have been, if true, a firing offense, no matter whether it happened on the first day of the administration or the last. But nobody can predict how the Trump administration will address it. I would say uh, the odds are good uh, that uh, uh, General Flynn's uh, tenure will not be permanent. But whether it happens tomorrow or in the future, the clock is ticking. Hmm. Well, there are reports of dysfunction at the National Security Council and rumblings that perhaps some people within the intelligence community have begun withholding sensitive information from the Trump administration. What are you hearing about that? Uh, well, uh, having had the opportunity to work closely with the NSC, both when I was in the White House and then when I served as ambassador, it functions on a basis of trust. The NSC is not a partisan institution, and you have people uh, from uh, uh, all political backgrounds. That's left at the door when you work on national security. Uh, the fact that NSC staffers uh, have a lack of trust and are even afraid that information they share in the Oval Office might leak uh, to Russia is uh, extraordinary. We haven't seen anything like this in modern times. Uh, the president has to right the ship. He's putting all of our lives in danger. Hmm. Uh, the National Security Council on which Flynn sits was busy over the weekend after a test missile launch by North Korea. What do you make of President Trump's response? Well, uh, it was um, uh, in content uh, uh, not a bad response. The Japanese prime minister spoke at Mar-a-Lago, followed by the president saying that they stand 100 percent, we stand 100 percent uh, behind our, our ally. Uh, but the process was extremely peculiar. Uh, uh, many of us have now seen the pictures on Facebook of uh, the president and the Japanese prime minister huddling at their dinner table in a public place in Mar-a-Lago, uh, in the dining room, uh, working on this crisis uh, because of the dim lighting, their aides using a cell phone uh, illumination uh, to read uh, sensitive uh, papers. Um, because of uh, hacking technology, when you uh, uh, open a cell phone or a smartphone on a document of that kind, it's like broadcasting it on the internet. So the process was peculiar. Uh, it flowed from the president's insistence on uh, having the opportunity to promote Mar-a-Lago. So I think it's more indication, uh, unfortunately, that uh, the administration is not quite ready for prime time when it comes to national security matters.
Well, how do you see the Trump administration handling North Korea moving forward? Well, the North Korean regime has uh, vexed uh, uh, recent American administrations of both parties, no matter how expert. Uh, the problem is uh, that North Korea uh, craves attention, um, but no matter what we do, whether it's the uh, Bush uh, policy of engagement or the uh, Obama policy of strategic patience, uh, really of uh, not responding, they push forward with their uh, nuclear advancement and with their uh, missile testing. So I think the key thing is, number one, um, President Trump is going to have to better engage China. China is the most influential actor when it comes to North Korea. And number two, he's going to need to work on the full multilateral context, both in the Asian, Asian region, in getting our, our other allies and even our adversaries to help on this problem, and then globally. Uh, the difficulty is that with his erratic start, his complex relationships with China, his flip-flopping, uh, it makes it very tough uh, to build that kind of a sustained campaign. Again, admittedly, the North Korean problem is one that no administration has been able to satisfactorily address. All right, Norman Eisen, thanks very much for your insight. Thanks for having me, Elaine.